It's very interesting that we've mounted a show on Leonardo and his role in sculpture when in fact there's no one piece of sculpture that art historians agree is by the great master. This is a wonderful example of how we explore uh, the fact that Leonardo truly wasn't a genius working outside of his time, truly a great visionary, a great inventor, but he was definitely in touch with the artistic practice of his time. Leonardo works on a very grand scale, i.e. A, a mural that he was commissioned to execute uh, celebrating the uh, victory of the Florentine over the Milanese in the Battle of Anghieri, a fresco mural that was measuring probably 22 feet by 45 feet. But then there's also this fabulous intimate drawing of a battle scene from the uh, Academia in Venice that measures no more than five by six inches. And yet you still get that dynamism, that excitement, that, that guts and glory of battle in that intimate scene. So he's one that worked incredibly large scale and small scale and then when you look at some additional sculptures in the gallery, you understand that Leonardo and his portrayal of battle really set the trend in terms of how artists of subsequent generations portrayed battle, be it in painting or sculpture. So he was truly a trendsetter in terms of subsequent generations of artists. The Horse Outside is a, um, a life-size, 26-foot high, contemporary recreation of what art historians and scientists think that Leonardo's equestrian monument to the Duke of Sforza from the 1480s would look like. Uh, that work was never fully executed for the simple reason that by the time Leonardo was ready to make that cast of bronze, 70 tons of bronze, the French had declared war on the Duchy of Milan, invaded them, and the Duke of Sforza, the Duke of Milan, decided to use that bronze to make cannons instead of art. So all we have left are again these drawings and these manuscripts that really tell the story of how Leonardo both came to the um, artistic vision of what that monument would look like, but equally important and intriguing is the technology behind it because there was no way that he was able to use traditional methods to make a horse that large in bronze. It still seems very fresh, as if Leonardo was a contemporary of you or me. The way he explores, be it how a person looks, how a scene is portrayed, his, his attention to almost obsession with detail is so fresh, so direct, that it really feels somewhat contemporary. But I think it also just reminds us of how great a genius he was. And not only was he a fantastic painter, we're learning that in fact that he was a great sculptor, but he was also a genius in other areas as well. And it's truly, uh, it's true when we say that he was the first great Renaissance man. I think the other thing is to remind people of how beautiful and how elegant and yet how powerful a draftsman he was. I mean, you look at these drawings and you are absolutely amazed at both the, the quality, the exquisiteness of it, as well as the, the absolutely powerful expression that Leonardo was in to introduce as the leading artist of the High Renaissance. As we talk about how people are so segmented today, so focused on one aspect of life, Leonardo with this great breadth of energy, of interest, of genius, truly the Renaissance man reminds us that, um, yes, let's think big, let's grab interest in many different directions, and let's not just focus on the one thing that we're particularly good at, but to explore the whole world and what it has to offer.